everybody okay with that problem? Do you notice that the division rule is a lot more subtle? <laughs> you look at this and think about things. Oh, arrangements. It's one of those things where we look at problems like this and it becomes really interesting. If I would say things like, all counting problems are constructive. If I sat people down around a round table, how would I do that and what's actually going on? Notice I had this discussion of looking, if I would look at it as a physical thing I could touch, this rotation, right? Rotational symmetry or flipping symmetry, you know, this idea of looking at it. You know, all of these counting problems are like that. So if I would say things like, you have seven guys and five girls, and I want you to put them at the front of the room so that we can take a picture. And I never want to have a girl standing by a girl because I'm sexist and I know that they'll talk. And I want to take a picture, right? Which is stupid, but I'm allowed to say that I'm sexist because I don't know. That's one of the, you have to do it in the book. The book always says things like no girl standing beside girls, but it's boring unless you say why. But anyways, so we throw them at the front. No girls can stand beside girls for whatever reason. How many ways could you do that? So let's try another one. We have how many? I said seven and five, right? Seven guys, five girls. I want to arrange in a line, but and this is the important part, and but no girl can stand beside a girl. I'm not going to get to the number, right? But I want to think about the process of, could you tell me how, if you were the photographer, and you don't want to have a girl stand beside a girl, right? And how would you do this? Give me a way that you would actually do it. Well, trial and error is you throw them at the front, and if you have girls stand beside you start moving them around, right? That's kind of random-ish, but we're going to need a what? A process like go to the front and then if you see people in the wrong I grab them and move them other places right that doesn't help me figure out a process of doing it give me a process though it didn't matter what that you would always have them at the front of the room and girls not standing beside girls okay but then we have more guys than girls so we'd alternate and then we'd have guys left over so where would you put them? You could put them at the end, but does that allow you to do all possible combinations? You could line up all the girls and then throw a guy in between all of them, and then you have three guys left over, three guys left over, okay. and then you can move them anywhere. So, so you separate them, and then it doesn't matter where the last two guys would go. Could we go the other way and say, how about we arrange the guys? Right? If I put the guys at the front of the room, how many gaps are there? If there's seven guys, how many gaps would you see? Eight, because there's ends. And so what you could imagine is the guys are just standing there as like the place marks in a bookshelf. And every guy, so I could put the guys at the front of the room. I could put, say, make, a, make slots, right? We have kind of the beginning, right, which would be the left. And then I'm going to every, then I'm going to have one guy, that's the first guy, second guy, third guy, fourth guy, fifth guy, sixth guy, and then seventh guy, and then obviously kind of an empty space over here. And then what can happen? Well, what I have now is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's like I've made eight shelves. And then if I put one girl in any of the shelves, what will have happened? Will a girl st be standing beside a girl? No. And so we also could, like what you said, we could do rather, we could do the same object and say, I want to have 
a a girl, make it blue. Girl one, girl two, girl three, girl four, girl five, and then you said I have five guys that must go here. But then how many slots do I left have left for the other three guys? I could put them here or 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 here. For the last three guys, it doesn't matter where I put them. But those boxes are where I could put them. And so I could put a girl here, a girl here, or a girl here, or here, or here, or here, or here, or here. For these eight spots, take the five girls and put them in there. It, would it matter which way you did it? No. I could do it at the top, or I could do it at the bottom. It would make sure that the girls aren't standing beside the girls. Now, I now have a process. Like for the first one, what would you do? Arrange your guys. How many ways can you do that? Seven factorial, right? <laughs> then what I'm going to do is I'm going to arrange my girls, and that is going to be you no, know, just the girls. I'm going to make the girls line up, and that's five factorial. And then I'm going to figure out where to put them. But putting them places is what? I got to figure out which five boxes I want to put them in. So, like, let's do this one. Okay, so we had what? We had seven factorial that arranged the ranges of the guys. I have five factorial that arranges the girls. And then what I'm going to do is figure out which box to put them in. But if I do that, I have eight total boxes. What am I really doing to my boxes? I'm breaking them up into two groups. The ones with girls and the ones without girls. But that's a division rule. How many ways for the boxes? But they are with girls or without girls. Is everybody okay with that? So if I do this, I said I was going to stop, but anyways, I didn't. If I do this, I arrange the guys, I arrange the girls. For the guys, they actually form eight spots for the girls to go, but of those girls, of those spots, five of them contain girls, five of them, three of them do not. So that's a division problem. I go ahead and divide out all those possibilities. And so the five factorial cancels, right, and the rest of it's going to be ugly, right? You can multiply this entire thing out if you want. What is that? Three factorial. Might as well make it like what? So we have seven factorial times eight times five. Man, seven, six, five, and four. Whatever that is. I'll just, who cares? <laughs> we all can do arithmetic. This is also where, honestly, you can do arithmetic. This is where you definitely use calculators. But this is also when I give you it on the test. I want you to stop here. <laughs> Why? Because you should. There will be a problem. There, there, there will be a problem where I ask you to do the arithmetic, but it won't be like this bad. It'll be numbers like four times five at worst. You know, four, five, three. Get up to hundred and twenties and divide by two. Doable problems. So we okay with that? Notice how counting problems have a constructive. Does it have very much an inductive process? <laughs> it's how would you develop a rule to always do this? And if I follow the rule, I will get it worked out. And then this process, like what I just said, arrange the guys, arrange the girls, find where you want to put them. Do you think you could program that? Sure, we can program that. Yes, sir. How do you do three factorial? This three factorial? Because what happens of my eight groups, I have five boxes that would have girls in them and three boxes that don't have anybody in them. So that's, but eight factorial actually counts that arrangement. It's the same, this problem here is the same thing as having eight blocks, five of which are one color, three of which are another color. 
So it's the exact same problem. Instead of saying this is a colored block or lettered blocks or whatever, we're saying it's people. Or has a person, doesn't have a person. Can you see why sometimes these problems are kind of fun? I mean, it's a puzzle problem. How would you do it? And you got to think it and argue it and, and discuss it with other people. So if you got a number in that one way I erased, where you put the girls up and then put the guys in between, and then put the other three guys in the gaps, should you get the same number? You should get the same number, right? As long as you do it. Now, that actually there is what's called a common accounting proof, combinatorical proof, is if you count it in your way, and, it's cur and you've done it in a way that works, and I count it in my way in a way that works, our two, rule, our two formulas have to be what? Equal. And so that's one of the ways to show that you have formulas that are equal. This is equal to this. Why? Because they both count the same thing. They have to be equal. 